and at the other end we're going to go through both stitches here and both stitches on our last stitch and come through and we'll have decreased one on this end chain two and turn and go back and count your stitches make sure that you uh, have the the decrease you want the correct uh, uh, correct count and the next one is um, also did a decrease and this is the half double crochet so we're going to make our connection here we're going to go into both here and both here pull those two together okay it's that easy at the other end it's a simple case of putting your hook in twice bring in a good loop voila and turn now however you did it on the on the front side down that's what you're going to be doing in decreases on the back up so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to follow my uh, decreases back uh, the way I did it my increases on the front until I get to the top and I'm ready to put it on my bag okay I'm on my last row single crochet this will be at the top edge of the back of my purse and you want to go through both loops on this last one you can either use both loops and go through in the conventional way like this or you can both loops and come through the back way you won't have the same pattern on the front uh, doing this because this this back row here becomes part of the front pattern but it'll, you'll still have a nice pattern and you'll have a good strong end using both loops for your edge here like this this is what it looks like on the front oh my camera does not like it when the light's low a little bit of a different look than you would from the front actually it gives it a nice edge but you can go um, standard if you like and just go from the back to the front and uh, then I'm going to be pinning it on my hand piece and see what I end up with um, before I do any connection to the handpiece itself, I'll be marking where my bottom edge of my bag goes. And I'll be turning the whole piece inside out and doing my side edges. So, I will see you at that point. All right, we are back at the point where we are turning our item inside out so we have the inside here I have the two sides exactly matched right where the even part of the bag starts right here I already measured against my arm piece my hand piece and that's where I want it I actually had to take this bag apart and come back to this part. My hands were all the way off the screen the whole time I was doing this. Real smart. I want to make a longer tail because I want to put it through here, bring it through my uh, slip stitches. It's not showing on top, so I can use it to make a little extra strength on the bottom 
Just like that. Just go through both sides of the edges. There we go. Don't have to worry about that tail. Whoops. Okay. Very simple. You can also whip stitch uh, sew this if you want. Okay. Get right up to where my pin is. I'm going to pull a little sneaky here. We come in here. You see, I've already it's it's locked because it's got this part of the stitch on it from before. So I can pull this through without destroying anything, without undoing myself. I'm gonna pull it through to this side. I've already done the other side. The bag is done. I've got myself a bunch of T pins. Make sure your seam side is on the bottom, out of sight. Time to place this on top. I'm going to start on the very edge, get this side seam, side seam on my bag, uh, the uh, beginning of my bag, and the side seam here, and I'd like to have them about like that. You can put it clear to the end if you want. This is, this is personal preference, okay? I like to have a little rim here. I think it'll look nice. There. I'll do this side first. Now. What I want here is, I have my single crochet, this is the end of my half double. And I'm going to bring this right over here to the end of my half double. I'm going to do this on all four sides, all four corners, this side, the opposite, and on the other side, and make them all look the same way. And I'm going to do some basting. You should be familiar with basting. It's where you um, just want to kind of do some loose stitches. Now I was doing my basting in here. 
and then my edge was moving. So I decided better to base out here on the very, very edge where I won't sew it. This looking good. All right, I'm going to do my basting on all four sides, and I'll be back to do the top stitching. I have uh, totally basted this on front and back, getting it as, as uh, evenly matched as I can. Making sure my little tails on both sides are the way I want them. At this point, you want to make sure your purse is everything you want because right now you could turn it right, could unbaste it, turn it right side out, take these little seams out, add on to the end, add on to the edge, all kinds of things. There's all kinds of things you could still do at this point. So make sure you're happy with it before you finish it off. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to start at one armhole. <laughs> it looks like an armhole on a jacket or something, doesn't it? Okay. first loop I'm going to pull both my tails get them in there come on okay Next slip stitch, not so much. Now I want to keep this on the outside of my basting. As close to the edge of the purse as possible. And you want to keep a fairly consistent with what part of the purse you put your hook through. You don't want one time out here, one time in there, one, one time just grabbing a couple threads on the edge. You want it nice and sturdy. Like that. This is going to make a nice top stitch. Pull you in a little bit more. I have to watch it when I pull you in. I tend to get off camera I did the uh, first person of series, the easy one, all the way through, went to edit it to um, make the film to upload, and 80% of the time, very frustratingly, I was off camera. Couldn't see a darn thing I was doing. Had a great picture of the back of my hands, up close too. So I'm staying a little bit farther away than normal so I can keep my hands in and I can still see what I'm doing. I think after all this time I finally have my lighting problem fixed. It's bright enough that you can see what I'm doing. It's not glaring enough that it's um, it, you know, makes it too bright to see. That's light enough for me to see what I'm doing. I had to use two lamps. One that I usually use 
I would keep trying to bend up and out of the way. I got me a second little lamp. Actually, it's a magnifying lamp. It's got a magnifier in the lid. And I found that if I took a Kleenex and taped the Kleenex over the bottom, that was just enough of a light filter that you guys didn't have to live with the glare. And I can still see. I like this combination. Now I gotta move this pin. Don't hesitate to move your threads around if you have to. Remember how we kind of snuck in the side of the little nubs? If you have to do that to bring an edge down to be happy with where you're connecting it, do that. Now, we'll go right across here. Just like that. And on my other corner here. Where am I? I am. Right down into here. Take my pin out. Go ahead, denim on the side. Making sure the edge is what I want. It's very hard to, um, uh, it's a lot harder to undo after you've sewn your ends in than it is now when I can just pull the string and undo all this. Check it first. There are some projects where I made sure that I didn't tie any ends in. I left my ends all where I could find them until I was done. So if I had to rip out layers or colors or whatever, I wouldn't have a problem. Okay, I'm back down at this point. I'm going to go one more step. This is where I started here. I'm going to go over here to where I came out the first time. My, tight aren't we? That way I've doubled over this one. I'm going to come up through that same hole. that puppy's tight. We'll pull this part down tight. Pull this up tight. Just for good measure, I'm going to give it a little knot. That little knot won't be felt on the inside. I'll weave my ends in. 
set this piece now. I did it closer to the edge on this side than I did on this side. I think as long as I match both sides, it'll be okay. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to match this edge on this side. Work my way around and I'll be done. See you then. This is the beginning of the belt. I chained about I chained as long as I want my belt. In this case, I made it five feet long, nearly so. I'm going to uh, make um, connected half double crochets all the way around. Now you can just do singles if you want. Do about uh, four or five rows of singles. But this is how I this is how I'm doing it. You want to come back, wrap your yarn. No, take it back. We're doing connected, so we're going to start out connected. I'm going to come down the second chain from the hook, go through the back bump, pull up a loop, I'm going to go down here. But, well, I can just go down to the very next one, I guess. This is half double. That'll give me three chains for my half double and my base through all three. Okay. Now I'll do the uh, lower half double for this one. The upper one I think raised and going through belt loops and being messed around with and everything would probably not weather as well as this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do Connected back uh, half. Doubles all the way down. Remember how we did these? Go through the bottom loop here. Or your bottom loop. Through the bottom loop. Of the three loops. On the hook. Go through the back lump, wrap your thread, go through all three. You have these loops that were gathered on the hook. There's three of them. The top one your hook loop is coming out of, the second one, and the third one. Going through the bottom one, here. There we are. Bring a loop up. That's like, that represents your wrap for a regular half double. Go to the bottom hump in the chain. There you are. Okay, now I'm going to go on down to the other end. Show you how I would, how we're going to do the other end. Okay. Now what you want in each end is a total, counting the first straight edge on the side to the first straight edge on the other side, a total of six connected half doubles. Now here we have our very last stitch. We're going to go through the back loop like normal. Oh, there we go. Pull up the loop our stitch, go back into our bottom loop here, pull up a loop, go through 
go back into the stitch in the end of the chain, pull up our loop, do it a third time on the same side of the end of the chain. Okay, that's three for this side. Now we're going to go over here to the other side where the two loops are and we're going to pull our loop in from that side. And you want to keep the end fairly tight. It's going to be going through a lot one of these days. And there's the third one. Now this is considered the first one on this side because it's the straight one right opposite your other straight one. You have a nice edge here. Six, um, six stitches. And you just go on and you're going to, on the back side, you're going through the two back loops to left behind. And you did the front loop. You got these nice two back loops. Do those like that. You end up with a real nice strong backbone. See there? Nice, even, neat backbone. If you go through just any hole, sometimes you're going to have a wide hole here and sometimes you're going to have a narrow one. This one gives you continuity all the way down. Now on the other end, all the way back, we'll be doing the um, two back stitches that were left behind when we did the hump on the other side. And these um, back stitches are what give you a nice closed middle. They pull the hump tight so it doesn't gap. It keeps them locked up so they're nice and firm. Everything works out beautifully. I want you to look at this real carefully. This here, this is your first loop, your first stitch. And it's coming right out of here. Pardon me, right out of here. Follow this back to here. Follow this one back to here, and follow this one back to here. This is your stitch right here. What you can do on the way up is, as um, soon as you make your first stitch, you go back and put a little piece of thread in it, and then you'll know for sure. So here's the first stitch, the one that the first stitch came off of. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Turned around. Okay, I'm gonna have to get sneaky. I gotta come in this side and then come over here and catch this side. It's easier when you stick the little threads so you just pull on it and it pops it up for you. Okay, now this is our two flat sides. So we have two of our six done already. As you get three from the level up on this side, three from the level up on that side, that makes six. So coming on this end, we need to add four more. And that's it. So we go through, make sure we come through the bottom.
and this is the third of this size side this is the top one of this side the second of this side and our level one is the third of this side so I come right in here pop a little slip stitch there's our two ends okay now I really do recommend when you start your first one that you put a little uh, swatch right there it makes it a lot easier to find your place when you come back okay so make your belts and come back we'll do the loops are you ready to tackle your belt loops? The belt loops are very simple. They have a simple beginning. Chain 18 and do four rows of single crochet. That's your beginning right there. I'm sure all of you can do that. Okay. Now when we get to the end, we're going to turn. I had that turned the wrong way anyway. We're going to chain up four one two three four we're going to go down in the second stitch down in the fourth stitch and we're going to go down right in the in the stitch that the uh, chain came out of okay four loops unhook that means we're working on a triple so we go one two three there's our first triple now what we're going to do here on the back here we have a little back bumps we're going to go through this back, back bump pull up a loop we're going to go through this back bump and pull up a loop and we're going to go through the next stitch over and we've got four loops on the hook so we triple out okay once more with feeling we go through a back bump we go through a back bump we go through the next stitch and back up three times and again go through a back bump oh well come on Charlie be nice did that stitch too tight There we go. Go through a bump. Go through the next stitch. Next hole. Right there. Now we have our original chain. We have one, two, three, four triples, connected triples. And now we're going to go into the first back bump. And we're going to slip stitch. We're going to go into the second back bump and we're going to slip stitch. We're going to go into one of the bottom strands down here and slip stitch then we'll slip stitch right into the edge here okay and this is our tab this is the part that will be um, being attached to the purse right here 
Okay. Now, you take your band and you turn it like this so it meets each other. And you go right in this corner. It's going to be sewn together anyway, so you might as well ignore having more uh, little bits and pieces than you need to weave in. Chain four. Go into a back bump. Go into a back bump. Go into the same base that the chain came out of and back off two at a time and again I'm going to go in I really split that one I'm going to go into another loop <laughs> oh don't you love it when yarn cooperates with you Okay, you go into the first hole, back up three, pardon me, second hole. I'm going to go down again, the next hole, it's the third one. And once again, and the fourth one. And this time we're slip stitching down. We went three slip stitches. Instead of uh, two, two pull ups, we went three. So there's one. And there's one. And there's one. A slip stitch right into this edge. Okay, now we have our two tabs. We have our loop, belt loop. Very important at this point, you want um, 18 to 24 inches of thread. Let's see how many I have here. Okay. That's about 24 inches. That's so you don't short yourself. Okay. I'm going to go, sit, go ahead and pull this through. Drop my hook. You can uh, slip stitch these together instead of crocheting. I mean, instead of uh, sewing. I'm going to do the sewing this time. I've already attached one of my tags. Okay. So. You can tell the base. You can tell the base right there. And see the base right there. See the larger holes? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to come through this side of the base and out through this side of the base. Just like that. Through. And through. And we're going to Put these two corners together, right here. Okay. Now it's just a matter of I'm going to come up uh, to the third row. And I can feel by the tip of my needle when I'm matching the hole in back with in front. If you need to turn it and look. Like that. 
There we go. Whoops. Don't you wrap around on me. And I'm going to come back to the center. To that row. So I've got three rows holding this belt loop together. You probably don't know, need three. Two would be fine. Three seems to be a magic number for me. There. And we want to come out right down here in our corner. Right like that. Now comes the fun part. I've already put one loop on. Uh, before I do that, I want to put this in. Get this one little tail out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up above here where it's connected together already and just kind of move it in back and forth so that I can feel it catching on stuff and being difficult to push through. That means it's going to be plenty firm enough. There. Now I'll put this one back on my needle. See how fast these belt loops are? They really are quick. Really, really, truly. Now I want to make sure I have this placed the same distance as the other. On the side. About there, I think. And I'm going to give it a little tack. Do put your finger inside and you'll end up putting the front, your front is Fronts on your backs. Okay. I'm going to stand it up this way and make sure I've got it where it's supposed to be. Down the edge. Okay. You can pin this a lot more if you feel you need to. First one I did, I think I had like 10 pins in it. I want to make darn sure the thing was where I wanted it. Okay, now we're out here on this side. We're going to go down to the center, down to the center, and straight down inside, like that. Back up. We're doing the top row across. Coming out one hole. Going in one hole. Whoops. Hate it when I do that. Lost my end. At least I know I'm not the only one who does it. Stuff a longer tail there. Just do that back and forth. <coughs> Excuse me. You really ought to stay on your own side, Charlie. There we go. Now I'm just going to do three rows. I'm going to, first I'm going to come down and do the tip.
window. Down here. And instead of going straight across, I'm going to do a little round thing here where I come up here, go in below it. Come up above. Go down below. When I come up again, here, I'm going to go through here to my other side. And turn. And I think at this point I can be pretty sure that this isn't going to come off, so I'm getting that pin totally out of there. Now it's just a matter of going down and up through these loops. I'm going to do this the easier way because I've got my finger under there and it can tell if I'm missing any threads under there. Go way down and just kind of force them up. Oops. Come down here to my point. For this one I will go down in. Let me see out of the way. keep bringing this towards me so I can see what I'm doing. That doesn't help you guys very much, does it? Okay. Now again, I'm going to go across, up, and down, and up, and down. Okay. And then I'll give it a little knot under here if I want. And I can either um, weave it through down here. Or I can stick it back up on top. And weave it back and forth in here. It's already knotted. This is nice and thick. Not going to go anywhere. It doesn't move and stretch. So it's not going to pull it out. I have both of my belt loops. Now, at this point or before this point, if you want to put uh, your row of slip stitch along here, you can do that. Even now, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. I think I've changed my mind, decided I'm going to. I'm going to slip knot using both of these. the first one. Okay. Maybe I'll do... Let me see what this looks like first. Now I like the look of that. Doing a single crochet type thing on it. But then I'm defeating my purpose because what I really wanted to do was make a, a, a stronger edge here. I like that though. 
Okay, so I'm going to slip knot here. And I'm going to come right across and slip stitch across like that. Now that's one way to do it, but what you have here is this type of an edge where you can see your back edge and it's kind of laying on the front. And I don't think I like that particular look. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to do a barred slip stitch. You bring your, you, you drag your thread over from behind. You stick it through the hole, drag your loop up like that and through, drag it over, put it in your next stitch, bring your stitch up through and through like that. All right, well, there you are. Now what this does Is it puts this right on top. You don't have that little um, that little effect where you're pulling this whole thing over and laying your your slip stitch on top of it. It makes it stand up on the end, and it looks quite nice. So you drag it over. Put your Crochet hook through your hole, bring your loop up and up, and you're leaving this little bar here. You see this little bar in front? That's what holds it up. It pulls it up. So you're dragging your stitch over, your thread over, you go in your hole, Pull your loop through the stitch, the loop you went through, in front and back of the bar, through the stitch on your hook. And here's this little bar right here. See there? Makes it stand up nice. It has the strength and non stretchability of a slip stitch, which will keep the side of your bag from stagging, sagging. I really like the barred slip stitch. When I there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and do this across. See, it has a little bit of give, not a lot. Whereas this has a whole lot of give. See that? So this is going to tighten it up across here. And I'll slip stitch into this. And the last one, I'll bring it through and tie it in back or tie it on the inside. Okay, and I'm going to do the same on the other side. And I'll meet you back. Now I've completed one side. I left the other side the other way so you can see the contrast. You might like this look better. Or you might want to use the variegated to do your slip stitch with. This kind of makes it kind of disappear, huh? Doesn't even look like you have a part of your purse there. And I have my nice hand warmer purse. Is my belt. Put any kind of any kind of belt through the loops if you want. If you wanted to make this for a special outfit with very wide belts, like a big white belt for a outfit or something, you want to make sure that your loops are big enough to go over it if that's how you want to wear it. Okay. There you go. There you have it hand warmer purse. And I hope you enjoyed making this with me. Happy crafting people. Happy crocheting.